guys welcome back to my channel lady max mw once again don't forget to subscribe thank you very much for stopping to watch my video today i'm so excited i have this wonderful young lady she is the executive director of uh, voice of women with disabilities and this organization is based the head office yes i can say so yes. the head office is in Cheu district don't forget Cheu district is in the southern part is it southern Central central part of malawi yeah it's one of the districts in central part of malawi so esther she's going to tell us more about the voice of women with disabilities in malawi tell us more about the organization and introduce yourself all right i'm esther Mbite, the executive director of voice of women with disabilities and visually impaired and alongside at the age of 22 um okay, after losing sight I lived, I lived five years in Denial. Now, these five years, I learned a lot. Now, when I wake up and come out of that uh, situation, that's why now I notice that there are a lot of challenges that women with disabilities are facing. Now, these challenges, uh, I was like, how can these things end? Mainly, the, the, the issue of sexual harassment and rape. Uh, uh, these issues are the ones that get me. Say okay, if only uh, uh, they can be a better fit for me, I think I can fight this. Now, with that, I decided to find uh, women with disabilities so that we can be in a group and we can discuss what the challenges we are facing and see how we can come out of here. Now, that's where now the voice of women with disabilities born. Wow, when was it established? Uh, it was established in 2016 mm -hmm. and it was. Um, Just share some of the challenges that uh, women with disabilities are facing in Malawi. Yeah, there, are, there are many challenges, but in brief, uh, women with uh, disabilities are facing a lot of challenges. Uh, as I said, the, the challenge of sexual harassment, mm -hmm. the challenges of rape, mm -hmm. and also discrimination in many activities, mainly in the villages that we are coming from. Mm -hmm. A lot of women with disabilities have been discriminated when doing activities in the community. And also, there is also discrimination at the hospital. When you're in the hospital and you're looking for sexual transfer, I mean, uh, sexual health uh, uh, services, mm -hmm. you find that the the, the, the the clinicians or the medical assistants will ask you, uh, how can a person with disability uh, look for sexual reproductive <laughs> Wow, I'm also person. I know. Yeah. I thought people that with disabilities are not sexually active. So that's what and is that's in the Yes, yes. Yeah. So that's what is working in the mind of people. But people with people with disabilities are not sexually active. So when I look at all those things, guys, guys, my viewers, <laughs> do you have the same in your country? If you have the same attitude, negative attitude. Uh, can you just give us a comment where you're watching from and uh, what else can be done so that these negative attitudes, most of in Africa, I think, I guess, and I don't think it's only Africa, around the world, these are the uh, perceptions that people have and their attitudes, the negative attitudes that a lot of people have to say persons with disabilities, they cannot be sexual active. Why? Why? <laughs> Tell us about your life, maybe just share us. Yes, do you have children? Yeah, I have two, you have two, two boys. Just, just imagine she is blind and she's a teacher, she's also an executive director, yes. and she's also running a business, personal mm -hmm. business, and married as well, managing the family, yes. everything. <laughs> okay, Esther, all right, all right, okay, yeah, just try to start to highlight on the achievements that so far as the uh, voice of women with disabilities so far have you achieved? Okay, fine. Uh, so far, as voice of women with disabilities, we have achieved a lot um, and we have also learned a lot. Mm. I'm saying that we have learned a lot because sometimes you might think that you know everything, but when you go and find out other people and see what they're doing and what they have gone through, you see that, no, I, I was left behind. Now, as voice of women with disabilities, we have managed to meet chiefs mm -hmm. in the villages uh, so that maybe we should discuss the challenges that they, they face or the, the cases that they were reported to them about the, uh, uh, I mean the, the violences, mm. gender-based violences against yeah. women. 
so we find out that there are a lot of uh, uh, gender-based violence happening to face of the surveillance so mainly women with disabilities. But the big challenge is that uh, the, the uncles and the fathers in the house, they always say, no, oh, this woman is, uh, is she's living with disabilities, she cannot get married. So maybe if you are raped and somebody has been treated, the parents will still say, no, this girl will take care of her. No, which is uh, like the rating rights, mm -hmm. because we also have the right to marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, when you, when, when parents say that no, this this is this lady is uh, is disabled, she cannot manage my, my I mean manage marriage life. It's like uh, you 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 are disturbing that person. Mm -hmm. So I find that the chiefs are failing to take care for that cases because it's like it's happening in the family. So that's one of the things that we have learned. And the other thing that we have learned is that also mayor are also worried. Mm -hmm. Those mayor, I mean now those uh, with disabilities or within, or without, without disabilities, yeah. they're married, they're worried because they always say that when you talk of gender-based marriage, you always, always talk about with the baby. Mm -hmm. Why, what about us? us? <laughs> because when we talk of gender-based marriage, it's us who are, who are violating your rights. Mm -hmm. Now you are leaving us behind. So if you are leaving behind us, behind, that means you are giving us power to violate more and more <laughs> and more. Okay. So after meeting the mayors, then we the soon now we also learn that oh, we also need to engage the men. Yeah. So we have been engaging the men, and also we have learned that um, all these things they, they need to start from the ground. Mm -hmm. Now also we have to add, also meet girls with disabilities. Now we went to schools and meet the girls and students to find out their challenges and how they go about it. So that's the big uh, achievement that we have done. I see that you have a lot of achievements that you have so far done since 2016. Uh, yes, but um, when you are learning and when you are uh, trying to reach to the goals, you still face some challenges. Can yes. you just highlight some of the main challenges that you are facing? All right, thank you, Mother. Um, the main challenges that we are facing is uh, lack of resources. Mm -hmm. uh, um, for example, if we, we, we are to meet at a, a certain place, and maybe there are women with visual impairments, mm -hmm. those with autism, these people mainly, mm -hmm. uh, they need to work with the guides. Yeah. So that means when you, you are budgeting, then you have to also budget for the guides. Mm -hmm. So that's a big challenge. And other challenge is that up to now, uh, people they don't trust. It. When we so we also we say that we want to meet uh, to be, uh, together as a group. Now, though the guide, guide, guidance from um, the guardians from the patients with autism, we don't trust that they say no, you might do something wrong. Uh, so that's also another challenge. Yeah. And the the last challenge and the biggest challenge is uh, the males. The males, uh, I, I always, I always no, say that. No, I don't try. Don't go there. Don't <laughs> yes, do that. Yes, yes. You know? Just they uh, always want you to be involved. Yes, yeah, they in, always, in those. yeah, they always invite the woman to come and say, no, you let me, no, you don't respect me, you do this, you do that. Okay. That's also the other challenge. How can people find you? All right, people can find us at Chiao, uh, that's in Sialuzu, Malaga Market. Okay. Yeah, the junction to Sialuzu Primary School, 200 meters to your left in the sphere of All right, and I also put the email address just down there yeah. for you guys. Maybe you would like to know more about women with disabilities in Malawi specifically in Chewu district in the central part of Malawi. So today I was with Estambi. Estambiri. What else can you tell people? <laughs> Disability is not in ability. Disability is not in ability. Yeah, love us, you. take yeah. us as we are, mm -hmm. interact with us, associate with us and learn more from us. Wow. Associate with them and learn more with them. Yes. So thank you guys and if you're not one of my subscribers, subscribe and if you're one of my subscribers, don't hesitate to give a comment, like and also share the link to others for more awareness stories. <laughs> what can I say? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so what should we say to the viewers? <laughs> Alright, trust yourself. Many of those people with disabilities know that you can do anything. Yeah. You can do anything. We are also
also human beings, see? Mm -hmm. we should not fail until we quit. <laughs> <laughs> so my viewers, bye bye. <laughs>